Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my first proper video <laughs> so I guess I should uh, introduce myself my name is Liam and uh, I'm an Italian aspiring comic artist and uh, in this video this uh, kind of draw and talk I, I don't know what this actually is it's some kind of a commentary uh, of me drawing <laughs> uh, I, I, I will uh, I will make uh, I will make up a name for uh, this for this video um, so in this video uh, I, I preventively <laughs> excuse myself uh, if I seem kind of uh, kind of an idiot in this video because uh, I never really done this uh, like that like uh, I never really did this thing uh, of uh, talking alone into nothingness for a long period of time in this case uh, mo a little more than an hour um, so this uh, is a real-time drawing video uh, of me drawing my original character uh, and in this case it's uh, a vampire um, I wouldn't say I'm into vampires a lot I mean uh, I, I like watching vampire movies, like when they're good. Uh, I never really read any books except uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, and not even all of it, because uh, I'm not really the, f the fast reader kind of guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But lately, I've... Uh, lately... I've been uh, watching a lot of uh, vampires and Dracula movie movies to like uh, inspire myself and write the uh, lore for this vampire and I I think I wrote even more than I could uh, than I could imagine because I got uh, a lot inspired um I'm, I'm not gonna tell you any of it because, I mean, it's personal, I invented it, so <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you about it here. Um, so yeah, uh, this character, uh, all I can say is that uh, it's a Scandinavian baron and uh, its name is Bard. B A R D H. And uh, basically, these vampires, th this kind of vampire, is uh, mainly inspired by uh, Klaus Kinski uh, interpretation of uh, Nosferatu in the 1979 movie by director. Uh, Herzog, I don't know his first name, let me look it up. Uh, Herzog director, Werner Herzog. And uh, let me tell you, it's a pretty good movie. If you're into uh, the kind of uh, old movies uh, that are kind of slow and uh, especially, especially old horror movies that are kind of slow and some and something like that um, <laughs> Nosferatu by Herzog is uh, a pretty slow and uh, I think even for some aspect it was even uh, uh, an experimental movie for that for that time because it's really something <laughs> it's uh, pretty weird the scenographic uh, choices the 
the um, st stylistic choices also and the editing choices more than anything because sometimes there are these like weird cuts of uh, uh, slow motion uh, flying uh, bat that uh, I mean are, are pretty cool actually I would say be because I mean it make it makes sense it's a Dracula movie because in that movie um, while it uh, <coughs> while it's a remake of uh, uh, 1912 uh, silent movie called uh, Nosferatu. Um, it's, uh, um, it's nonetheless uh, an adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, because Klaus Kinski in that movie uh, plays Count Dracula only in a different adaptation, like, uh, I mean, I mean <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that um, the original 1912 uh, silent movie was indeed an adaptation of Bram Stoker Dracula, but uh, uh, the main character played by, uh, I hope I don't butcher it, Max Schreck, in 1922, um, it was called like Count Orlok, not Count Dracula. And it was, I believe, the first vampire to ever be portray portrayed in movies and cinema, I believe. Um, While well, the first Dracula to ever appear on, on, uh, on film, uh, the first proper Dracula was, of course, Bela Lugosi in uh, 1931, uh, Dracula. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, what I was saying, uh, the, what makes it original, uh, what makes uh, Nosferatu 1979 original, is that it's actually an adaptation, a, a proper adaptation of... Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and uh, my favorite one, I believe, because it's probably, except for the ending, uh, because it, it still was a remake of uh, 1922 Nosferatu, so it had to end uh, kind of the same way, uh, I guess. Um, so what makes it different uh, was uh, like uh, the ending mainly and the characters because uh, in the original 1922 Nosferatu I don't think uh, that uh, Professor Van Helsing shows up for what I remember I, c I could be wrong because I don't remember that movie so well I did watch it but I don't remember um, in this movie Van Helsing does show up, but it's not, it's, it's not uh, um, the, the classic Van Helsing everyone knows, like the vampire hunter uh, and uh, dark magic expert or something, uh, vampire expert, I should say. Um, no, it's just uh, in 1979 Nosferatu, it's just uh, a doctor and he helps out the main characters uh, when they like get hurt or something. Um, so yeah, it has some different things, because, but, but I think that uh, it might be one of the most, the most faithful adaptations because Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie uh, by, by Francis Ford Coppola made in 1992, I found it pretty disappointing. Um, I mean, I guess it's well made, but uh, since, since it's called Bram Stoker's Dracula, you you expect it to be somewhat uh, faithful, faithful to the original novel. Um, I don't think it is. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, it really disappointed me. The, the, the editing in uh, Coppola's Dracula is all over the place. The pacing is all over the place. The 
the script i i guess it's kind the writing i guess it's kind of smart in some places because uh, it it found its way into being adap adapted uh, kind of well the writing in uh, such a messy um such a messy editing uh, because it is messy, the editing. It's all over the place, really. It doesn't take its time. Uh, a thing I, a thing that I noticed is that uh, almost every single Dracula movie, it's not longer than an hour and a half. And it's really a shame because it, it, it looks like every single Dracula movie it's um, planned to not be longer than an hour and a half on, or an hour and 40 or around there. Uh, so what it feels like with Coppola's Dracula is that was desperately cut and edited to fit into that uh, uh, hour and a half uh, window of time. And it's really a shame because Coppola is such a good was because he's not anymore. I mean, he's old. Uh, I don't think is he still alive? Is Co is Coppola even alive? I don't know. Let me look it up. Francis Ford Coppola. Let me look it up. Yeah, he's still alive. He's eighty-one. But I don't think he's uh, as good of a director anymore. I mean, Francis Ford Coppola is the same guy who did uh, uh, what? What was that called? The Godfather series, the Godfather saga of movies. Um, I mean, those movies are really good, unbelievably long. So he, because are like three hours per movie. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but uh, that is a director that uh, needs to take his time. It's not a director that uh, he is is comfortable, clearly, uh, as seen in uh, Bram Stoker Dracula, uh, with uh, a definitive uh, window of time. I think that his movie, Bram Stoker's Dracula, would have been a masterpiece if it was split into two movies, two movies of uh, the length of uh, like uh, two hours each. I think it would have been way better than how it came out. Uh, but I mean, that's just uh, my opinion. It's <laughs> I'm not saying that it's what you should think. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just putting my opinion out there. Th th that's the thing. Um, some sometimes, uh, at least I, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, um, happens that uh, I roam around the house because I'm I'm alone for like uh, half a day at my place so because then i i still live with my family so as, at some time they they come back home from work and something because they're all a productive member of society and i and i am still not <laughs> but uh, yeah so sometimes i find myself roaming around the house making arguments with myself like whole discussions about nothing and um, like uh, it could be some movie I just saw uh, like discussing myself some movie I just saw or maybe Dragon Ball theories or uh, uh, fan theories about anything else <laughs> and it's pretty weird so I'm kind of uh, letting it all out there right now <laughs> so yeah um, I mean, I guess it's fitting because, I mean, I'm drawing a vampire and uh, I'm talking about Dracula movies, I guess it's fitting. So, um, I talked about uh, Nosferatu, 1979, with Klaus Kinski, 
I talked about uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula um, by Coppola with Gary Oldman because uh, he had Gary Oldman to play Dracula. He plays a fantastic Dracula in my opinion, but uh, the movie is so poorly edited, is so poorly well, is so poorly put put together. Uh, it's a shame, really. Then we have, uh, uh, of course, the most famous Dracula, uh, Bella Lugosi, Dracula, in uh, made in uh, 1931 by director Todd Browning. Uh, that movie is uh, well for this time. It's not boring. I have to say, I re I watched it two times. One of which, uh, one of uh, which, uh, pretty recently, and I guess it's made really good. There are some horror movies from back then that are not as well made. Like I also uh, watched uh, like uh, the other Universal monsters from uh, the thirties and forties. Like I've watched the. Uh, the Mummy, made in 1932. Then I watched uh, Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein. I watched also The Were the, the Wolfman. It's called The Wolfman, not The Werewolf. Um, all made in 1930s and 1940s. And like uh, the Frankenstein movies are probably the best. The two Frankenstein movies, Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, are the best horror movies of that time, in my opinion. Um, but like when uh, you get to uh, like the mummy, the mummy it's so fucking. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. It's so boring. The mummy it's so boring. Nineteen thirty two mummy. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I I was nearly falling asleep. And it's a shame because maybe for that time it's it was an average kind of movie, but it it aged so bad. And I'm sorry for it because there are like some uh, some special effects, some visual effects that are uh, pretty good for that time. So it's kind of a shame. Um. So yeah, the main focus was uh, Todd Browning's. Dracula with Bela Lugosi. Um, Bela Lugosi, it's a fantastic Dracula, in my opinion. It's, um, I mean, at, at that time, I guess it couldn't, uh, it, it wasn't uh, very possible to make uh, a faithful adaptation of the novel. And that was the first proper try, because uh, I talked earlier about uh, uh, 1922 Nosferatu, and that was, uh, I mean, kind of an adaptation of uh, <clears throat> Bram Stoker's Dracula, but uh, not really, <laughs> because uh, the vampire there is called uh, Count Orlok, so it doesn't really count. I guess it's... Uh, I guess that Count Orlok it's actually the first original vampire to even appear on film. I mean, it's not only the first vampire, it's uh, the first original vampire that it's not Dracula. Because, I mean, Dracula is probably the, the vampire that appeared the most in all of cinema. That's a straight up fact. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of curious. I just thought about that. It's actually the first original character vampire to ever appear on film. Pretty cool. So yeah, um, Bella Lugosi could be one of the best Draculas out there, along with uh, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee was also really good, but let's talk, let's focus on Bella Lugosi. Meanwhile, in in the video, I started inking. You can see that uh, I preferred the Nosferatu kind of take 
for the teeth. I really like those teeth because uh, they, were, uh, they remind me a lot of uh, actual uh, bats. That uh, some vampire bats actually have the the pointy teeth on the front instead of being like the at the side like a classical Dracula. Uh, but yeah. Um, Bella Lugosi delivers a very theatrical portrayal of the character and uh, I mean it's good because uh, when you watch uh, the movie it feels uh, like it's uh, li like you're actually in a theater uh, watching these characters kind of getting along because it was the early times of cinema and uh, sound cinema like with actual voices and uh, so they thought cinema and uh, theater could be the same thing it, it's really not but uh, for the early times it was a pretty honest uh, take and a pretty good uh, mishmash of the two things um, and Bella Lugosi every time he's on screen he completely steals the show completely he is so good the the shame is that uh, he, i mean he's probably the most famous to uh, the most famous actor to ever play dracula but uh, the thing is he played dracula only that once he on cinema at least he played Dracula years before uh, in actual theaters, like uh, physically uh, in front of people. <laughs> um, but on cinema, that was his only movie as the titular vampire. He has been like some other main character in other kind of movies, like thrillers, uh, mo thriller movies or something some stuff like that, or sometimes he wasn't even the main character, he was uh, like a secondary character. And it's a shame, because I, 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 I never really understand why that went that way, but uh, probably some uh, contractual issues. It's, it's always that, honestly, because Bella Lugosi loved to play. Dracula. That role is what uh, made him famous, so I don't think uh, the case uh, was that uh, he didn't want to portray the vampire anymore, really. So probably there were some issues with uh, like uh, Universal Pictures or something, or uh, the director even, I don't know. But um, it's really a shame that uh, he couldn't play that vampire anymore. It's really a shame. Um, the movie overall, it's uh, not really a faithful adaptation of the novel because, like, the novel starts with uh, Jonathan Harker going to Count Dracula's castle. And this movie starts kind of the same way, but instead of Jonathan Harker, it's uh, Renfield a colleague of Jonathan Harker, who in the novel, it's already gone mad and it's already a, a disciple of, uh, of Dracula. So I guess it's kind of good to see, uh, to see how, he get, how he gets crazy and all that. It's um, it's really original, I think, because yeah, I'm I'm kind of losing uh, <clears throat> kind of losing hope to see uh, a faithful adaptation of the novel. Um, so I guess uh, as of now, as of the person I am now, I am more interested. Uh, to see 
what uh, new interpretation of the of Dracula they can bring off screen on screen uh, rather than uh, what is the most faithful adaptation because uh, I don't think I'll ever get it honestly um, like a proper adaptation I don't think I'll ever get it but uh, yeah <laughs> hope uh, never ne never leave hope guys never never leave hope um <laughs> okay uh kind of went off uh, on a tangent there um after bella lugosi probably the most uh, famous vampire probably the most famous actor sorry um to ever play that uh, character is uh, without a doubt uh, christopher lee Christ Sir Christopher Lee, may he rest in peace, he was uh, great. He was just a golden level actor. He was so good. Like, I, I recently watched uh, all of his uh, Dracula movies uh, and, uh, oh, wow, it's so good. Like, Dracula the Vampire. 1958 is the first time that Christopher Lee plays the, the titular vampire and that movie like there are like 10 movies with Christopher Lee as Dracula and uh, that one the first one it's still the best they put uh, Christopher Lee's Dracula aside uh, which I, I, I mean, along with uh, Peter Cushing's Van Helsing, another really good actor with a really good role, like perfectly fitting for him. And uh, it's like such a duo. It's, uh, it's such a good duo, really. It's so good. And it, they work so well together on camera. It's... Uh, amazing honestly and uh, it might very well be my favorite dracula movie actually 1958 dracula the vampire with christopher lee and peter cushing my favorite dracula movie easily actually i mean there are other dracula movies that i like but that one could easily be my favorite so I, I have here the, the list of the Hammer Dracula movies that are basically the ones with Christopher Lee. And uh, there are one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine movies with Christopher Lee. I mean, not all of them are with Christopher Lee, but uh, they're all of the same saga uh, by Hammer Movies, uh, the production, Hammer, Hammer Production, whatever it's called, it's called Hammer. Um, two of them do not have Christopher Lee, but uh, one of those, uh, it's because uh, the main vampire, it's not even, what the fuck am I doing on video? Yeah, because like the, I'm sorry for that. the The webcam is uh, is new, and uh, I still have to get used to the set to the setup, so I can uh, move it around a bit to see how it works. But uh, yeah, sorry for that. I guess I will go back to drawing now. Um, I was saying it's a total of nine movies. Uh, by Hammer Movies production, and uh, two of them do not have Christopher Lee. One is like the second one, but because uh, the main actor does not play Dracula. The main actor actually plays a disciple of, uh, of Dracula, so you could say that one is kind of a spin-off movie kind of thing. So yeah. But uh, Christopher Lee comes back in the third movie and goes on until the second last movie. 
which is called The Satanic Rites of Dracula, made in 1973. Pretty bad movie, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gives out such a good portrayal of the character, but uh, what is a shame is that uh, in that period, uh, Dracula wasn't considered to be like the deep character, deep and sad character that is in the book and uh, is portrayed in uh, Coppola's Bram Stoker Dracula, uh, or even in uh, any of the recent uh, Dracula movies. Uh, back then, it was just a monster. It was just a monster that uh, needed to be defeated because uh, he wanted to kill uh, the main characters. And uh, another, maybe worst thing than this, is that uh, back then it was nearly inconceivable to have uh, a bad ending. The monster had to die in every single movie about it. So, you, you are like about to watch uh, nine movies about Dracula, he's gonna die in every single one of them, and in every single one of them, he is gonna come back to life at the beginning. It, it comes back to life in the beginning, and he dies at the end, in every single one of them, except in uh, Dracula AD 1972, made in 1972, um, in which they, like, uh, I guess they jumped the uh, Dracula comes back to life things, quote-unquote, and uh, it was already back to life, and uh, the prologue in that movie, AD 1972, is, uh, is in the late... 19th century, and uh, he and Van, and Van Helsing are, are just going at it, like they're fighting on the riding uh, carriage uh, in the middle of London, like, it's actually pretty epic as a prologue for the time, and uh, yeah, they kind of like, uh, they didn't want to show the the Dracula comes back to life thing um, for that prologue at least because they show how he comes back to life in 1972 um, but uh, they, they, they began the movie like uh, you know the drill you, Dracula came back to life uh, you don't even care how he just came back to life because that's what he does it is Dracula uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, here's the movie. Eat it. <laughs> uh, and I really like that movie. It's really I th I think it's the second best movie of the whole uh, Christopher Lee saga. The second best because uh, unfortunately Peter Cushing's Van Helsing appears only in the first movie. The second movie, which uh, there isn't even uh, Christopher Lee in it, then there is no Peter Cushing Van Helsing for any of the sequels until Dracula AD 1972. So it makes uh, one, two, three, four whole movies without Peter Cushing's Van Helsing. And... Uh, Five, if we count the second one, uh, five movies in which we don't see uh, Peter Cushing and uh, Christopher Lee together on film. So I liked particularly AD 1972 because uh, it sees uh, Peter Cushing's coming back as uh, his uh, original role as Van Helsing and uh, again, like in the first movie he and uh, Christopher Lee's Dracula go along uh, 
so perfectly so perfectly it's uh, fascinating how they work together really it's like uh, kind of like batman and joker it's that kind of uh, or rivalry like uh, without one there can't be the other and that's kind of how I felt uh, watching the previous movies because like I, I watched the first one that had uh, Dracula and Van Helsing together but uh, all the other didn't except this one and there was always this uh, empty hole in the middle like you felt like there's something missing, like, okay, there's Dracula, but where is his nemesis? Where is Van Helsing? And that's where, that's where the other movies lack, in my opinion. There was no Van Helsing. Okay, so... Yeah, I guess, I guess that does it for uh, the Dracula movies, uh with Christopher Lee. Oh yeah, the the other movie that doesn't have Christopher Lee's Dracula, but uh, is part of the Hammer movie production series, is The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, made in 1974, the last one of that saga. So yeah, that movie is not that good. That movie... There is Dracula in that movie, but it's not Christopher Lee, and whatever actor they chose, they... <laughs> uh, it's it's so bad. It, it's so bad. Sometimes you can't... You, you, there, there are some actors that just aren't fit for the role of Dracula. And I think the actor chosen in... Uh, the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Let, let me look it up who it was. Um, it was... Uh, John Forbes Robert. He was so bad. <laughs> I literally... I, not that I hated him in that role, but he was so cringy. He was so... Weird, because in that movie, we have Peter Cushing's Van Helsing. So, and again, it could be considered another spin-off movie, kind of like the second movie. But we don't have Christopher Lee Dracula. We still have Dracula, but we don't have Christopher Lee as him. And it's so weird. It's so cringy. <laughs> like, the second movie worked because, I mean... The first movie ended with uh, Dracula's death, so it's kind of a spin-off, the second one. And uh, you can assume that uh, Van Helsing was like off hunting down some, uh, some of the Dracula disciples. And the vampire protagonist of that one was uh, that, <laughs> like he was a Dracula disciple. So Van Helsing was hunting him down. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense in this one. I mean, they managed to keep uh, Christopher Lee's Dracula for eight movies. What kept them? What kept them into having him for the last one? I mean, I guess he probably didn't even want to be in this one because, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a. Uh, I, and I need you to follow me on this one. It's a movie that merges Occidental horror with uh, Oriental Kung Fu movies. You heard me right, folks. It's, uh, it's that weird. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of fun. It's still better than the, its predecessor movie. Like, uh, its predecessor movie was uh, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, and that movie was so bad. I mean, it had Peter Cushing's uh, Van Helsing and uh, Christopher Lee's Dracula, but uh, 
the movie as a whole it's so bad and it, and it hurts my heart to say it because I just finished explaining you why it's so good to put together put P Peter Cushing's Van Helsing and Christopher Lee's Dracula in move in on film but the satanic rites of Dracula is just not good it's really not good and it may, it pains me to say it and the last movie legend of the seven golden vampires ends up being better than the last movie in which we got Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee together. It's such a shame. <laughs> Whatever, I guess it's it it was the seventies, I guess. <clears throat> there is uh, another movie that sees uh, uh, Christopher Lee as Dracula one last time. I mean, the last time he played Dracula, I guess it was for the Satanic Rites of Dracula in 1973, but in 1970 he played Dracula with a different take. Christopher Lee played Dracula in a, in a movie by Jesus Franco called uh, Count Dracula. And uh, it was supposed to be a faithful adaptation of uh, the book Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, I watched that movie, but uh, it was unbelievably boring, unbelievably boring. Um, the, the budget was unbelievably low and uh, it was noticeable after watching the Hammer movies about Dracula, with uh, which they all had um, a pretty high budget. This one had a low budget and it looked like uh, it was meant for TV, like one of those uh, straight to TV movies. I mean, it, it's that uh, boring. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, but it, a curious thing about that movie is that Christopher Lee plays a kind of an accurate, I want to say, a kind of an accurate Dracula. Um, the shame is that uh, that movie still is not a faithful adaptation of the book. And uh, the character of Dracula is still not that explored. And uh, it's, such a sh it's such a shame when you have uh, Christopher Lee as Dracula, because Christopher Lee is such a gifted actor. Um, if, uh, l let's say, if uh, they would have made a decent, really, by the book adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, Christopher Lee would have probably been the best Dracula to ever appear on film. And that's a fact, because he's, a, he's probably the best actor to ever have played Dracula. I mean, the best actor in the sense that he has actor skills go. He was the best one. Um... And uh, if he would have played the dramatic part that is the Bram Stoker Dracula role, I feel uh, like it would have it, it would have been uh, the the best one. I d I don't know what else to say. It would have been uh, like groundbreaking. It would have been uh, uh, un unremakable. Uh, it would have been. Uh, I don't even know how to put it into words. It would have been... Uh... Yeah, I mean, nobody else would have been able to give out uh, the same... Uh, uh, how is it called? The same uh, performance. Nobody. And again, it's such a shame that uh, they didn't do that while they had Christopher Lee. 
it's such a shame. Although when it comes to the dramatic character of Dracula, we only have uh, two... Um, meanwhile, in video, I think I just went to the bathroom. I didn't know how to cut the registration <laughs> when I did the video, so yeah, I, I went to the bathroom and leave the cam left the camera rolling. Sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> I was saying, for, for what regards the uh, dramatic role of Dracula, um, I guess there, are, there aren't many actors who did that recently. Like, we have... Uh, we've had uh, Gary Oldman, but uh, way back in 1992, nearly 30 years ago, uh, for uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula by... Francis Ford Coppola, and uh, we didn't have uh, a dramatic portrayal of the character until Dracula Untold. Dracula Untold is uh, a movie, let, let me get it uh, here but real quick, Dracula Untold, yeah, it's a movie made in 2014, it wasn't uh, very well received, but I personally, li I personally liked it. I don't, uh, I don't understand why people didn't like it, but uh, I mean, I, 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 I thought it was pretty compelling. I mean, it, it, it didn't have to be faithful to anything, honestly. Um, once again, it's not anymore about. Uh, being faithful to the movie. It's about who makes the most compelling adaptation of the character at this point. And I think that uh, Luke Evans as Dracula worked pretty well. Because he, 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 I think he portrayed the most uh, dramatic uh, adaptation of the character. <clears throat> the most dramatic ad adaptation of the character to date. And uh, I found it pretty compelling. It uh, goes along pretty well. So yeah, that's something. <laughs> it, it, even, it even had uh, Charles Dance as the master vampire. I mean, it's, uh, it's this guy that... Uh, gives uh, Dracula his vampiric powers, basically. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, I really advise... I'm, I'm really... If I can put it into words, maybe. Um, I, I really mind you to take a look to that movie, because it takes... Uh, I, I mean, it's such a original take on the character of Dracula. Give it a look. It's uh, it's I I find it really good. Um, so yeah, uh, Charles Dance is pretty good in that movie, and Luke Evans as the protagonist is really good too. As a uh, as I said, in thirty years, Luke Evans' portrayal could be one of the best. For Dracula. Then, even more recently, uh, I should talk about the other one first, though, right? We have uh, we have uh, Dracula from the movie Van Helsing, made in two thousand four, ten years before Dracula Untold, and that Dracula was played by. Richard Roxburgh. It was a fun Dracula. I mean, it looks like uh, Richard Roxburgh. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm eating my own words. It looks like uh, Richard Roxburgh was having a lot of fun playing uh, Dracula in that movie because Van Helsing, 2004 Van Helsing, was uh, was meant to be like uh, the Universal Monsters. 
Avengers. <laughs> it was meant to be like a crossover of uh, uh, the werewolf, Dracula, and uh, and uh, Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster at least. And they all appear on screen, and I think it's pretty nice, <laughs> honestly. Um, it's a movie by Stephen Sommers, he's the same guy who made uh, The Mummy back in 1999. You know, that movie about The Mummy that everyone knows about. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it was actually pretty good for the time. Uh, whatever, we're talking about Van Helsing. Um, this portrayal of Dracula is pretty unique too, because uh, it's like an immortal Dracula. He can't be killed with anything. He can't be killed with garlic, not with silver, not with the crosses, not with anything. And I won't spoil with what uh, he could be killed, because, I mean, if you want to watch, uh, to watch that movie, uh, you, you'll have to see it by yourself. Um, but it's pretty interesting. The take that uh, made him take, I guess, I, I, I think I, <laughs> I repeated some words there. Uh, <laughs> what I want, to, what I meant to say is that uh, the take that uh, Richard Rosberg um, portrays, the the way that uh, Richard Rosberg portrays Dracula, it's pretty uh, unique. Because we never had anything like it um, in cinema. The movie, mind you, the movie was low budget, so it didn't age really well. But uh, as far as visual effects go, but I think it's still pretty, pretty fun. It's still pretty fun. Again, another movie that wasn't uh, very well received, but pretty interesting. Then we have uh, another we really weird Dracula interpretation called uh, Dracula 2000, a movie made in the year 2000 <laughs> uh, by Patrick Lussier. Um, this movie uh, as Dracula at the actor Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler, sorry. Um, and it's so weird. I mean, I feel like Gerard Butler could have made a decent, uh, actually pretty decent uh, portrayal of, uh, of Count Dracula, but uh, this movie is so bizarre, I guess, because, I mean, it's meant to be a Dracula in modern times, but uh, it's so nonsensical, kind of, because it, it doesn't really respect the um, the vampire laws, aside the uh, sun, the light of day rule. And uh, I, I don't know how to put it into words. This movie left, left me speechless for how weird it is. And it's not weird in a good way, mind you. It is, it, it really, it's really not. I still have 13 minutes left to talk about the latest take on Dracula. That is the Netflix miniseries called Dracula, made uh, this very year, 2020. Uh, Dracula is portrayed in this by Klaus Bang. Um, I never really know, I never really heard of that actor before, but I think he did a pretty good job. I mean, this Dracula, is not, uh, once again, it's not an adaptation of the book. It has some elements coming back from the book, 
like uh, Jonathan Archer, it has Mina, <coughs> Mina Archer, uh, but like uh, many other head elements of the book, this movie, I mean, this miniseries does not have. Um, what else to say? This uh, adaptation is more like... Uh, sorry. I had to take a sip of water there. Uh, this portrayal is more like a reproposition of uh, Christopher Lee, Christopher Lee's um, interpretation of Dracula. And uh, I think Clay Bang makes a pretty good job with it. Um, this is the most uh, characterized Dracula we probably ever got. This Dracula has so many... How, they are, how are they called? He has uh, so many shades in, its, in his uh, psychology that is so curious to witness. And like he's a cynical Dracula. He's egocentric. He's self-absorbed. He's he's an asshole, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but uh, a compelling asshole. Like I really found it a good portrayal. Really, really good. And again many, many things inspired from the Hammer series of Dracula. Like, uh, there is a kind of a time shift in the middle of these uh, episodes. Like, uh, one day is in the late uh, 19th century, 19th century, and uh, the other episode, it's like nowadays because uh, something happened. Uh, oh, I guess that was spoiler. And uh, yeah, I should cut that out, but whatever. Um, um, I think this uh, is uh, one of the best uh, interpretation of the character we have so far. So I still have uh, Nine minutes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this time could be the first time that we ever got a female Van Helsing. Because, yes, it's Van Helsing, Hagata Van Helsing, mind you, uh, portrayed by Dolly Wells. And uh, I, what I, an advice from me is that you watch uh, first the first Dracula movie uh, with Christopher Lee in Dracula the Vampire in 1958. You watch that. Then you go on Netflix and pop up this bad boy. Dracula made by Netflix. <laughs> and three different directors. It's three episodes, so pretty much a trilogy uh, of movies, because every single one of those episodes is an hour and thirty, going back to the the argument, the, the topic I did uh, at the beginning of the video. Um, an hour and a half in three episodes made for a really complete and deep Dracula story which is something nobody, no director really accomplished with an hour and 30 uh, window of time. The only one that went past the hour and 30 was, uh, well, hour and 30 was uh, Herzog with uh, Nosferatu, made in 1979 
and it's the first movie I talked about in this video, so I think it's a good time to close up my discussion about Dracula movies. So yeah, I think it's fitting. I talked about uh, Dracula movies, at least all the ones I saw. Um, I watched, sorry. I'm Italian, I don't, I still don't speak uh, really good English, but uh, I guess uh, making this kind of video could be of uh, nice uh, practice for English. So yeah, you could see that uh, this is how my vampire looks. Bard is his name, Baron Bard. Uh, yeah, I, re I really am a fan of uh, the Nosferatu teeth. I call them Nosferatu teeth because they're in the front, not at the sides. Um, I don't know the English names or for uh, the teeth, the, the teeth. So leave me alone. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also a fan of uh, those long ears. I mean, he, this vampire of mine have, has different forms. So, it, when he's uh, in his normal form, like the human-like form, the ears are shorter, they're more like normal, but when he enters the, the vampire form, uh, the ear gets longer, like that. And that is particularly inspired by, <laughs> if I have to be honest, is uh, inspired by Piccolo from Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball character, um, which is uh, one of my favorite characters from that series. Uh, one of my favorite characters from that series. So yeah, I really am a fan of that. But it's not easy at all to draw long ears, long uh, elf-like ears. It's really not, because it's already hard to draw a normal ear, but uh, if you have to stretch it out and uh, make it like longer than it already is, it looks off. Even this ear that I drew, it, it looks off. There's something wrong with it that I really can't figure out. Now you can see that uh, I am uh, kind of moving the camera around to see what is the better angle, what uh, the light uh, it's best, uh, my drawing. So yeah. I, I'm doing the, what's it called? Wait a second. Uh, Google Translate. <laughs> uh, let's see what it called. The gums. The teeth gums. Uh, I'm drawing, I'm coloring them with a slightly darker shade of red, because I mean, I guess it makes sense. Uh, while the eyes are, are blood red. It's not realistic uh, blood red, but uh, it's kind of that uh, fleshy uh, red that was typical in the Hammer movies. Um, Hammer horror movies in general, not just Dracula. But uh, yeah, it's prominent in the Dracula movies. In the blood in those movies was so red because uh, they were some of the first, uh, uh, some of the first uh, colored horror movies. So they had to portray blood, and uh, so they went with it <laughs> all out. The blood in that is so fleshy that it looks fake by now, but uh, it still gets the idea. It still gets the idea going, so I think it's it works fine anyway. Okay, here I'm using uh, an yet another shade of red because uh, I had to I had to give the idea of like um blood sitting off on his mouth, he just drank some, 
so it's like uh, there sitting on his mouth uh, uh it's like uh, drier blood it's not uh, fresh so i wanted to give that idea of uh, dry blood dry out blood um the eyes i made them red because the vampire bard just drank blood so uh, a characteristic of uh, the classic idea of vampire is that uh, his eyes turn red whenever he whenever he drinks blood or uh, is attracted to blood in general and uh, i love how scenographic it looks i mean how cinematic it looks because uh, yeah i really am a fan of uh, red vampire eyes who do you think he has the best vampire eyes? I think it's Christopher Lee. It has to be Christopher Lee. Although, I guess there are actors who have redder eyes, who have more red eyes, like um, Gary Oldman in a couple of scenes, uh, as uh, in a couple of scenes, has uh, some pretty good red eyes, red vampire eyes. Uh, it's not even fair to consider Bella Lugosi because, I mean, his movie was uh, in black and white and, uh, yeah. <laughs> but who do you think was the best Dracula in general? I think, for me, it has to be Christopher Lee. And this was this video, I guess. Still have some seconds to go out, but uh, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, it's been fun to talk about uh, vampires and vampire movies in English, which is something I don't really get to do. So yeah, thank you for sticking with me and uh, see you in the next video, I guess. Bye.